these cars are very difficult to put back together, most because their rust is very problematic. It has a lot of uh, collateral damage to it. The rust isn't generally contained in an area. It spreads and migrates all over the inner chassis. You know, it's stuff that the, uh, the end user never sees. It takes an awful lot to put a Juliet back together. I mean an awful lot. To get a car like this to this point, it's a pretty significant um, effort. The guys here are fairly dedicated to what they do. And they try absolutely their hardest to meet not only standards, but the objectives. I've had two guys in this car, it's Friday. I've had two guys in this car this entire week. The customers typically don't like seeing an invoice that day. The harsh reality is, these guys clock out at 5 o'clock every day. They stay until 8 every night on their own time to meet this objective. It's a two-edged sword. It takes an awful lot to get this car to this point. Not only financially, but physically, mentally. And when you get to this point, to a degree, it's almost tragic. Because everything you see now, with the exception of the dash, you won't see again. Once this car gets its interior and its supposed to work, you'll never see any of this. But at least you'll know that it's quite sound. Because you don't necessarily want to just use any given color or colors you're really attracted to, but you need to use colors that are more into the period, not only for the maximum value point of view, but because the lines don't necessarily look right if you get to using modern, more glamorous type like colors. The colors used on this may look somewhat subdued to you. Now we're going to have an awful lot of chrome on this car, which is going to reverse that experience. But for now, just Enjoying it for what it is is where we're at. I do like this color. This is going to be an awesome color. Can you imagine this with all the chrome that's going to be out in front of it and all the chrome on the rear of it? You know, the big, meaty, uh, gigantic 19 inch wheels and you know, just everything that goes with this is gigantic seven foot long rolling fenders, which will be a completely different color than this. They're going to be a dark green. It's a good choice. I do like it. There's only a few of these known to exist. When I say few, I mean literally one or two. This is the hardtop coupe rumble seat version of this car. They made a lot more of these in the convertible and a lot more limos than they did of the coupes. We're going to have a tan top up here. This color, dark green fenders, lots of chrome, the original massive spoke wheels. When it's all said and done, this is going to look great. We put six coats of clear on this car, which is an excessive amount of clear coat, but the reason we did that was very purposeful. We're going to wet sand this thing, wet sand it, wet sand it, and wet sand it, and then we're gonna buff it out. The reason we're doing that is because we want it to have that dripping, wet look forever. You gotta have enough clear coat to remove in order to create that image. It's gonna be all right. It's not 
quite eight o'clock in the morning yet, and everybody's here. Um, we kind of hit these moments where we get really charged about what we're doing. And sometimes that could be just the feed you're getting from a customer and the relationship you develop with them over the months and sometimes years. And this is a perfect example of one of those cases. This car has taken a very long road to get to this point. I don't mean necessarily in time as much as I do is what it took to get it to this point. And the guy who owns the car is a really, really good guy. Um, the men are inspired by him. The men are uh, comfortable talking to him. And um, the exchange information is free flowing. These are all the things you want to do when you're restoring a car, whether you're the customer or whether you're the builder. You want that free flowing exchange information. You want to feel like dialogue is good to go. Um, when there's resistance, when there's confliction, when there's hostilities, when there are uncomfortable moments, it makes it very difficult for anybody to want to move forward, and that's understandable. But this isn't that case. This car has taken an awful lot of time to get to this point. Its needs were great, but it is at a point where we are all very proud and very happy for the customer uh, to be here. It has been primed many times um, by design. And now we are going to put the last coated primer on it. That primer's gonna get knocked down and then we're going to color. That is a, a, a momentous occasion. We are just uh, so happy that we're gonna be at that point to be able to offer the customer his car back in color as he envisioned it. Um, these days don't come easy. Um, it takes an awful lot of not only resources and skills and energy, but it takes an awful lot of patience to get there. And that could be a tough road, but we are really, really happy that we're at that point with this car. And it's a good thing, not only for us, but it's a good thing for the customer because he finally gets to see his car as he's always envisioned it. And we're really happy for him. There's just something really cool about seeing a Giulietta, albeit an early one or a later series one like this, going down the road, just glowing in glossy paint, bright work, super shiny, on a sunny day. Whether you own it or whether you're seeing it, you're going to do one thing, you're going to smile. And it's going to leave an impression on you. This car deserves that second chance, and now it's got it. It's a really big day. So we finally turned the corner on this 101 Giulietta. Um, after many hours of uh, blocking out and sanding this uh, beauty, we turned the corner and uh, she's just about ready for another layer of primer. When a car's at this stage of the game, this can be a strenuous part of the build. Um, for the technicians, us, and for the customer as well. We're gonna layer the primer uh, based upon what we see as far as high and low spots. Um, we wanna get this thing as smooth as possible. Every day is a constant vibe for perfection on finishing these customer rides. Um, we know that our customers love their cars. Um, they put their heart and soul into these cars and Everybody thinks that doing the metal fabrication and bringing this car from a state where it's completely gone um, uh, structurally to a point where we're going to make sure that it's going to be shiny and beautiful and the body's going to be perfectly straight. It can be a hassle and, and stress in, on many levels for everybody, uh, for the painter, for the, the dude that did the metal fabrication work, um, for the boss overseeing the project, and for the customer. When right you want a final out. inspection on a car like this, we're coming at it with a fine tooth comb. It's pretty much like looking into your soul. Uh, we want to see every little minor detail that was missed. We're gonna pick this car up. The apart. most difficult part, I believe, of the build is making sure that that body is perfectly straight, 
the floor. We want to make sure that our substrate or our base is uh, perfect. So when, when we lay that, that paint coat onto that car, it's flawless. When we hit it with the clear, you don't see the waves. If the substrate, that. the body isn't perfectly straight, it doesn't matter how expensive the paint you use, how good the painter is, that body is gonna have a wave in it, it's gonna, have, it's gonna look like there's dents or dings or whatever with it. Uh, the substrate needs to absolutely be perfectly straight, which requires blocking the car down over and over and over again and priming at, if need be. Um, so at this stage here, the body work has been finished and the car's looking fantastic. What we're gonna do is send it uh, and have it primed one more time. Aside from uh, creating a giant mess, which I'm sure Jaren's going to be pissed off about later, um, I'm blocking this thing out with the medium soft block, get it as smooth as possible. Um, put a nice guide coat on it last night before we pulled it out of the booth, and uh, this thing's cutting out real nice. Not a lot of high waves or rolls in it. Um, it's real flat and smooth, and it's exactly what we were going for. This thing is going to look great. and. Uh, this dark charcoal that we're going um, One of the things that we do a little bit differently is we've actually got the hood and the trunk set on the car so that as we're cutting it we get a nice uniform feel for it. Um, it's important when you do dark colors, uh, glitters, silvers, anything with flake or pearl that you have this uniform texture. You want to make sure you're cutting it in the same direction, it has the same flow and the same feel so that when you actually spray it and attach the trunk on the car everything looks uniform. <laughs> 